All right. First up, we're going to recognize September as, well, it is being recognized as Workforce Development Month. And today we're talking about transportation. David Vogel's joined us. He's the Dean of the Transportation Center of Excellence here at HCC. Welcome back to the show, Dave. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks, Dad. So we're looking forward to hearing about your program. Now, um, since we've returned to campuses, uh, I wasn't expecting to hear that you have a hybrid course coming up, but tell us about that. Yeah, so we've got an electric vehicle and hybrid that we're developing right now. We have a, uh, we're working with the city and the county to get all their technicians uh, trained for all, all the safety procedures. And then we're going to go into more detailed stuff. Now, would this be something like a partnership with various automotive um, manufacturers or how would this work or would the students learn um, fixing these vehicles, whether they're made by Tesla, Toyota or GM? Yeah, it's going to be a generic one. It's not uh, dealer specific because each each city, uh, the city and the county have different vehicles. So we're, we're going to cover all different vehicles, hybrids and electric. Now, what industry training are you offering your students currently right now? So we have uh, Toyota. We have all their online offerings that our students can take for free. We have Subaru University that they can take for free. We have Audi, and we also have Ford now. So we have four different manufacturers that the students can take uh, free training. And tell us about our dual credit program, because I know that's a big push. We're going to be featuring it extensively in our convocation. And tell us how automotive fits into that, because I would imagine if a student is going to high school, they get training in automotive technology, their career is set for them really making some a good living, correct? Yeah, yeah. And we've partnered with HISD and we have several schools that we're going to right now with the dual credit. We have over 200 students that are doing dual credit through the automotive uh, program. So when these students get out of high school, can they automatically go into like a dealership and work? Will they get certified enough for that? Yeah. So what we're doing is an OSA for them. So they finish the uh, intro service brakes and suspension, and that's enough to start at a quick lane or a uh, uh, Firestone, uh, Jiffy Lube, things like that. What's the latest in the new and advanced equipment for our students? I know I think the last time we were talking about smart cars and things like that. What's the latest technology that you guys are looking at? So uh, it's really the electric vehicle and hybrid that we're working on getting. But we've updated a lot of our equipment. Matter of fact, we just got a new frame machine for the body shop. We got an Audis system. It's for all the sensors, lane departures. You have If you replace any of them or even a windshield, you have to reset all your sensors. Otherwise, it won't work correctly. You know, when we talk about hybrid and electric vehicles, that seems to be the buzz around the country right now. It's many states, California, et cetera, uh, are saying by 2030 they want to go all electric. And it, the argument I've heard, maybe I can get your take on this because we're going to talk about truck driving as well as well. But um it's, it's going to cost so much more for the industry to upgrade to electric vehicles. And, and then those costs could be passed on to consumers. Obviously, we want to set, we want to get our students trained for the future. But do you see it happening fully as quickly as some states are predicting? Well, you know, the infrastructure has to be there so everybody can actually plug their car in and it doesn't shut down the grid, right? That's the, that's the big question everybody has. And I've noticed a lot of people are going with hybrid because if we have another Aerie, once you run out of your charge, yeah, you know, you're out. But with a hybrid, you got gas, you can you can still use your vehicle. So that's a big thing. And then of course, I don't know if you heard, but I guess the UWA is going on strike. So all, they're shutting down all the big three manufacturers soon. Yeah, that was just announced this morning. Yeah, interesting times. Um, commercial truck driving. I know uh, we've talked about this, especially over the last three years. We can't seem to get enough uh, truck drivers out there on the road for transportation. Um, what does that mean for our students? That's certainly going to be a viable industry. Yeah, we've actually had a waiting list um, uh, for truck driving over the past year, but we've actually caught up now. So Students can come in and get in within a couple of weeks. Now it used to be an eight month waiting period, but now we're, we're caught back up. Um, I don't know if you heard, but yellow uh, trucking company, they went under. So that put 30,000 workers out of work. 
So some of them guys are filling the need, but still people are retiring. So there's still a shortage of truck drivers out there. And what I've heard in the, through the industry and interviewing some people is that a lot of the older truck drivers after COVID, they just were literally earned enough money to where they could either take a few years off or retire. Are you finding that as well? Yeah. And most of them guys, like, like you said, they went to Amazon and, and, you know, delivery UPS and things like that, where they don't have to drive over the road because, you know, they, they did make enough money and now they can be at home every night. Right, right. In Amazon, boy, that's that. I imagine they're always looking for drivers too. Yes. Okay, let's talk about if students want to learn more about the opportunities out there, David. You guys have some job fairs, and are there scholarships available for them? Yeah, we have a Thunderbird Club that gives a scholarship every year. We have uh, Marvy Fingers. That's through high school. If they're a high school student, they can apply for that, and that pays for everything. Uh, there's WIOA that also gives scholarships. We have TPEG as well um, for scholarships. So definitely have a lot of scholarships available out there. And what what's the um, if someone is looking to get into this program, let's say their their hours have been cut or maybe their job was lost during the COVID times and they're not needed in that industry anymore. Um, what's the shortest time they can get certified, for example, if they want to go into truck driving um, and then how long is the program itself? So truck driving is uh, if you go full time, it's a six week program. If you go part time, it's a 12 week program. It's a uh, full time is eight hours a day, Monday through Friday. Part time is on weekends and nights. And there are um, scholarships and financial aid available for that, too. Yes. Yeah. That'd be the TPEG that I was talking about. OK. And what about automotive technology? Um, if someone is looking to get into that industry, because, boy, you know, we can't seem to get enough of, uh, of uh, people to repair our vehicles now. Yeah. So what we've done is we have a stackable uh degree plan. So when you first come in your first 16 weeks, you'll get an OSA. And that's what I was talking about earlier with the dual credit. And then you continue to the next semester and you'll be taking uh, your electrical, your AC, your engine performance one uh, classes. And then that'll be a level one, a smaller level one. They call that a maintenance and light repair certificate. And then if you continue on, you can get your full automotive technology certificate, which includes uh, transmissions, manual transmissions, engine R&R, &R, engine repair. And then if you want, you can continue on and get your associate's degree. So it's it, they're all stackable. So that way, if once you, each semester you finish, you're more prepared for the, for the industry. One final question. Um, I know a lot of our programs have cohorts. Do you guys have year-round enrollment where your programs are constantly being offered? How does that work? Yeah, in automotive and, and truck driving, we, we do have year round. The only the only program that doesn't go continuously all year would be body shop because it's only a 10 and a half month program. So it, there's a six week period where we don't run classes in body shop. David Vogel, he's the dean of HCC's Transportation Center of Excellence. David, thanks for being here. We're going to have all the information on your programs and how people can register in the social media post after the show. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Todd.